Hello, and welcome to the MSAG's continuing COVID-19 series. Today, we want to consider the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic by the UK government. Interviewers will often ask for your opinion on the handling of the pandemic, so this video aims to help you grasp the UK government's response from various perspectives. As usual, grab a pen and paper, and let's get started. This has been a uniquely challenging situation for governments around the world. As of the 6th of January 2021, the UK has had over 2.7 million people test positive for COVID-19. On the 5th of January, a new record of people testing positive within a 24-hour window was established, with 60,916 positive tests recorded. As of the same date, the UK has had over 80,000 deaths from COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic has been one of the biggest peacetime challenges facing the UK government. Why don't you try thinking about some of the ways in which the UK government handled the COVID-19 pandemic? Pause the video and jot down a few decisions that you remember, with a timeline, before watching more. The UK government has done lots of things to try to control the COVID-19 pandemic. They have introduced a series of laws to stop people spreading the virus by implementing lockdowns. The UK government introduced its first national lockdown at the end of March 2020, which lasted for around seven weeks. There was another month-long national lockdown in November of 2020, and a third national lockdown started in January 2021. In addition to this, there have been a series of local measures introduced throughout the pandemic. The UK government has done much more than just lockdowns. They have provided substantial financial support to individuals and businesses. They implemented a job retention scheme, also known as furlough, where the government paid up to 80% of an employee's pay where they were unable to work. They also offered grants to help struggling businesses survive, as many were forced to stop operating due to COVID-19 restrictions. The UK government also faced the huge challenge of making sure that the NHS could cope with the pandemic. The National Health Service received £6.6 .6 billion from the UK government's Coronavirus Emergency Fund. The UK government built new hospitals and recruited thousands of retired healthcare staff to help meet the demands of the pandemic. The UK government also faced the enormous task of supplying personal protective equipment, or PPE, to health and social workers as well as increasing the testing capacity for COVID-19. Then there was research. The recovery trial in the UK discovered the first effective treatment for COVID-19, dexamethasone. The UK invested £210 million to help develop a vaccine in March 2020. We'll now take a closer look at how the daily cases of COVID-19, as well as deaths from COVID-19, have fluctuated between January 2020 and January 2021. We'll also look at how the UK government responded to and managed the pandemic. We're going to split our study into sections so that it's easier to understand. The first time period that we'll examine is between January 2020 and April 2020. This is a graph showing the daily number of positive COVID-19 test results between the 14th of January 2020 and the 30th of April 2020. The two positive test results were reported on the 30th of January 2020. The seven-day average of daily positive COVID-19 results remained low until March of 2020. In March, the daily positive COVID-19 results increased from 33 cases on the 1st of March to 4,513 cases on the 31st of March. As you can see from the graph, the number of reported daily positive COVID-19 cases plateaued in April. There were 4,907 positive COVID-19 cases on the first day of April and 4,957 positive COVID-19 cases on the last day. This is a graph showing the daily number of deaths within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test result. This graph shows data between the 2nd of March and the 30th of April 2020 as this is the earliest data from the UK government. The first death on this graph is seen on the 2nd of March. As you can see on the graph, the number of daily deaths increases at a rapid rate, from one death reported on the 2nd of March to 507 deaths reported on the 31st of March. The daily number of deaths continued to increase in early April, to a peak of 1,072 deaths reported on the 8th of April. The daily number of deaths then decreased throughout the month with the peak of 1,072 on the 8th of April to 549 deaths on the 30th of April. Now let's take a look at how the UK government responded to the COVID-19 pandemic during this period. Pause the video and jot down what you know 
about the UK government's response to COVID in the early months. Let's run through a timeline of events in this period. On the 31st of January, the first two cases of COVID-19 were confirmed. In February 2020, a few isolated cases were discovered around the UK. There was also the first documented case of a man infected with COVID-19 in the UK who had not recently traveled abroad. On the 5th of March 2020, the first UK death was confirmed. On the 12th of March, Public Health England stopped contact tracing as widespread infections overwhelmed capacity. On the 17th of March, NHS England cancelled all non-urgent operations and freed up 30,000 beds. On the 21st, cafes, pubs, and restaurants closed. Nightclubs, theatres, cinemas, gyms, and leisure centres closed immediately. On the 23rd of March, the UK lockdown was implemented. People were asked to stay at home, only leaving for essential shopping and one form of exercise per day. The two-meter social distancing rule was introduced. On the 24th of March, the government announced it would build extra hospitals, such as the NHS Nightingale London. On the 2nd of April, Matt Hancock, the health secretary, announced a target of 100,000 tests per day by the end of the month. On the 28th of April, testing capacity reached 73,000, short of the 100,000 target. The second time period that we'll examine is between May 2020 and September 2020. This is a graph showing the daily number of positive COVID-19 test results between the 1st of May and the 30th of September 2020. The number of daily cases fell significantly in May, from 4,731 reported on the first day of May to 1,081 cases reported on the last day of May. This decline continued throughout June and July. The lowest daily number of cases in this period was reported on the 12th of July at 369 positive cases. The average number of daily positive COVID-19 cases gradually increased during August, and then we can see a more rapid increase in September. On the 1st of September, there were 2,250 positive COVID-19 cases reported, and on the 30th of September, there were 12,560 positive COVID-19 cases reported. This is a graph showing the daily number of deaths within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test result. This graph shows data between the 1st of May and the 30th of September 2020. The number of deaths on the 1st of May was 567, and you can see the number of daily deaths declined every week until mid-August. The daily number of deaths went as low as 3 deaths on the 19th of August. The number of daily deaths then started to increase in mid-September. There were 3 deaths on the 1st of September, compared to 57 deaths on the 30th of September. Now let's look at how the UK government responded to the pandemic during this period. If you can remember, pause the video and jot down what you know about the UK government's response over the summer of 2020. Let's run through a timeline of events in this period. On the 10th of May, a slight easing of the lockdown began. Government slogans changed from stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives, to stay alert, control the virus, save lives. Prime Minister Johnson asked those who could not work from home to go to work, avoiding public transport if possible, and encouraged the taking of unlimited amounts of outdoor exercise, and allowed driving to outdoor destinations within England. On the 1st of June, gatherings of people from more than one household were limited to six people outdoors. Primary schools reopened for certain year groups. On the 4th of June, face masks were made compulsory on public transport. On the 10th of June, the concept of support bubbles were created for people living alone. On the 29th of June, cases spiked in Leicester. Leicester local lockdown was introduced. This became the first of many local lockdowns. On the 24th of July, it became compulsory to wear face masks in shops. On the 25th of July, leisure centers and gyms reopened. In August of 2020, cases and deaths reached an all-time low. However, in early September of 2020, there was concern over an increased number of cases. By the 18th of September, the government had tightened restrictions further in parts of the northeast of England. Pubs were told to close every day from 10 to 5, and households were not allowed to mix. On the 22nd of September, tightening of the COVID-19 restrictions were announced by the UK government, not just for England, but for the devolved administrations in the rest of the UK. This included 10 p.m. closing times for pubs across the UK, and a ban on households meeting in other households in Scotland. 
We're going to end the video here, as this was a lot of information to take in. We suggest you watch the video again to make sure you didn't miss any notes worth taking. In our next video, we'll continue this timeline and look at how the response in the UK differed from other European countries.